Hey, this is Lee. I want to do a video today about a tormenting spirit or a heavy spirit, evil spirit. There's a lot of names people use for it. But I want to show you that in today's time, this is what we're dealing with on a regular basis. Watch television, talk to people, and you will see people absolutely losing their minds. And I'll show you why. And uh, so we got, well, I started writing today and i just started writing and writing and writing and the lord blessed me and I, i'm just revelation revelation it just kept rolling on me and i wrote this lesson in a few hours whatever it was and i think i i with god's help i i figured something that will help you so i sat down and what came to me was king saul and king saul was a king that people wanted uh samuel the prophet anointed him king Later, God says he would re he repented that he made him king because he started making sacrifice when he wasn't supposed to. He was supposed to kill certain people and go back to war with them, and he let uh, the king live when he shouldn't have. And you can read this. Go to First Samuel and read this story because it's amazing. But let's go with one step at a time. I'll show you something. The evil spirit didn't come from God, but released the spirit to trouble him. God didn't didn't have an evil spirit to send to him. God approved it because of his disobedience. Uh, and you read this in 1 Samuel 16, 14, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. It's gone. The spirit's gone. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. So Saul knew it. He had a confirmation in his servant, and he knew the spirit of God was gone. He was a mess. He was just a mess and something started to happen over time remember that david went in and played the heart for him to calm that spirit to run that spirit away which by the way is another lesson for another day when you pray in the spirit play the harp in the spirit sing in the spirit preach in the spirit it drives spirits away evil spirits get drove out if you don't then they have a place to come and live another story for another day uh the second one is an evil spirit causes jealousy very much. You see this all the time in church. You see it on the job. Jealousy is crueler in the grave, and it eats people alive. In 1 Samuel 18, 8, and Saul was very wroth, being mad, and, and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David 10,000, and to me they have ascribed but a 1,000. And what can he have more but my kingdom? So they went out to war. They went out to battle. They come back in. The people, a woman uh, singing a song, and the people started saying, David killed uh, ten thousands with an S, but Saul killed thousands, and it made him jealous. And he said, what else can happen now? He's just going to take my kingdom. Saul had an evil spirit. He knew he was going to lose the kingdom. Okay, next section, the evil spirit made Saul want to kill David. An evil spirit is murderous, and I want to say this and get this out there. There's two ways to kill somebody. You kill them with a gun, a knife, you just kill them physically dead. The other way is to hurt someone's reputation. You can kill people that way. It happens in the church all the time. And the, an evil spirit drives people to do this. Jealousy, remember here, and then death. You see pastors do it to each other. The one who get blessed, people get saved, they get jealous of him, kill his reputation, kick him out of the church. Happens all the time. <laughs> Before I get excited, well, 1 Samuel 18, 9, and Saul eyed David, meaning he was watching him from that day forward. He never took his eyes off him. He was plotting. That's is what an evil spirit does. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand. He was playing the harp. Uh, and at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. Somehow, David's playing. He's in there doing his thing. This evil spirit overtakes. This is a, this is like a horror story. Uh, King Saul picks a javelin up. He walks in the room. He has it in his hand. In 1811, and Saul cast a javelin, for he said, his mouth, listen, I will smite David even to the wall with it. He wanted to nail him to the wall. That's how much hate this evil spirit drove him. And David avoided out of his presence twice, two times. He got away from him. Or he got a javelin stuck in him. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. See what happened? Jealousy. Uh, he wants to kill. Now he's afraid of him because Saul knew the spirit was gone and he was trying to kill him dead. 
Now, here's the madness of an evil spirit. How would killing David going to get the spirit back in you, Saul? It ain't going to. Killing somebody else don't make you more spiritual. It makes you more evil. But see, the madness of an evil spirit will want you to kill somebody thinking that's going to be the solution, but it only compounds the problem. That's an evil spirit. The next one is an evil spirit grew because of Saul's fear of losing his crown, possessiveness. Evil spirits cause possessiveness, coveting, lying, jealousy. And and 1 Samuel 18, 12, and Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from him. It was the crown. Yes, it wasn't all about God. It was about the crown, the power, the people calling him king. And you'll see this in pastors. They love to be called pastor. And if anybody gets in the way of that, singers love to be the head singers. I mean, this happens all the time in churches. And it has to stop. It has to stop. It's an evil spirit that caused these things. Divisions. Uh, okay, the next one is the evil spirit makes a person suspicious of good people. Now watch. When somebody gets an evil spirit, they get suspicious. Even when they're doing good, the Lord's blessing them. They're, do, they're feeding the hungry. They're doing all this stuff. And pretty soon everybody's like, What's he doing? He's doing something wrong. He he wants something. They get suspicious, and then they, they, you're driving further. Uh, 1 Samuel 18, 14, and David behaved himself wisely in all his way. God, the Holy Spirit, was telling David to be quiet, act wisely, be calm, and don't upset Saul. And the Lord was with him. And See what I'm saying? And uh, 15, wherefore Saul... When Saul saw that he behaved himself wisely, he was afraid of him. <laughs> Why was he afraid of him? You're, Saul was still king. David was just being gentle and humble and loving. But it made Saul afraid. You see how this is working? So let, let's recap real quick. Spirit from God, approved by God, not from God, approved by God. Jealousy, uh, murder, possessiveness. Now he's afraid, suspicion, and fear. Notice in verse 14, 15, the Holy Spirit makes a person humble, and an evil spirit brings all the negative human and demonic emotions and actions. Exactly. This is what's happening to Saul. This is how what David's doing. Remember later, he could have killed Saul, but he didn't. He just cut a piece of his garment off because David said, I will not hurt the Lord's anointed. I won't do it. He could have, might have even been justified, but David wouldn't, and that pleased God. Okay, the next one is a person stops loving everyone. Saul was willing to even use his daughter to kill David. In 1 Samuel 18, 17, and Saul said to David, Behold my elder daughter, Merib, her will I give thee to wife, only be thou valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, Let not my hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. <laughs> so here's what happened. So he couldn't kill him. He was afraid to kill him. He was jealous of him. So then in his madness, he reasons in his mind, okay, I won't kill him. I'll promote somebody else to do it. I'll put him out in the head of the battle, then let them kill him. Then I'll be clean. Have you ever seen people do this? They'll, they'll, they'll backbite and do something, get somebody mad, and then let them kill you, and then sit back and say, I'm clean. No, you conspired to have them killed. You're guilty. You're guilty. And this is what evil spirits do to people. And what's really weird is King Saul was willing to sacrifice his daughter to do it. See, when you have an evil spirit, there's no sacrifice you won't make to get what you want. That evil spirit will drive you even to sacrifice your own kids. You will do it. So what causes a person today to get a tormenting spirit? It all began for Saul when he disobeyed God. Remember, First Samuel fifteen eleven, and it repented me that I had set up Saul to be king, for he uh, for he is turned back from following me, and hath performed has not performed my commandments. He broke the commandments. Look back up through what I just said. A lot of commandments broke there, and it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Did that change it? No, Samuel or Saul was already going down that hill. He was headed downhill and heading fast over time. Uh, in my years as a Christian, right here, in my years as a Christian, I have watched people turn jealous, envious, angry, spiteful, devious, hate-filled, and have murderous intentions, both spiritually, to ruin a person's reputation, and physically, 
want to kill people. This is what evil spirits do. When a person's that way, boy, they would. there's nothing they won't go to to get what they want because that's not just their mind anymore. It's the evil spirit controlling the mind. So let's go back in history a little bit. Remember the story of Cain and Abel, the first murder of man ever. In Genesis 4, 3, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the fruit of the ground and offered it to the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord was respectful, uh, respect unto Abel and not of his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he was, he had not respect. And Cain was wroth for his countenance fell. Why? So let's get, make it straight. So you understand this from the beginning, uh, Adam and Eve taught their sons that you had to, to, uh, offer animals because the burning fat pleased God. He loved it. And it also represented the blood that was shed when you did an offering would someday represent the temple and then Christ on the cross. So they knew they both had the same parents. They knew what was right. Abel was willing to get, to do what he was supposed to, but Cain tried to get away and, and offer grains, you know, fruits, vegetables, all kinds of stuff. Well, then he was upset because he knew that God didn't have respect on it. <laughs> yes. And the Lord said unto Cain, why are you wroth right here? Why are you wroth? And thy, why is thy countenance fallen? See, people can tell when you're not doing right. They see it on you because your countenance falls. The way you act, look, it falls. And if thou doest well, thou shalt, uh, shall thou not be accepted? Question mark. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Whenever you do good and it go and you know God's not accepting it, you better start looking because sin lies at the door. So not only is he wroth with God for not taking what he wanted to give, uh, God also says, "What's wrong with you? If uh, if you did well, I would accept it." But he didn't. He offered grain. He didn't offer meat, and said, "God said, sin lies at the door, and unto thee shall be this his desire, and thou shalt rule over him." Now. That's, a, that's another story, but let's let's go on. And Cain talked with his brother Abel over time. Now, this remember what I said, it don't happen all in one day. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel and slew him. He killed his own brother. See what an evil spirit does? See how what happens in the church when they kill each other? They talk bad about each other. They hurt each other's reputation. A husband and wife do it to each other, jockeying for power. Siblings do it. Mothers even, mother and fathers do it to their kids, and their kids do it to their parents to kill each other. In 4 9, and the Lord said unto Cain, Where's thy, where's Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not, liar. He just lied. Am I my brother's keeper right here? You sure should have been. Because if we were our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper, then we wouldn't be killing them. We'd be wanting to take care of them and watch out for them. But he make, he uses where he failed as an excuse, and you know God's not going to buy it. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth to me from the ground. Now, why? what's important about this is uh, life is in the blood. Read the Bible. It says this. When Jesus died on a cross, when he bled, they pushed, pushed all the blood that went down through the beatings, the, the persecution, nailing to the cross. He died on the cross. Every drop of his blood cried out to the Father from the ground. And this is why we're saved. Without the shedding of blood, there'd be no remission of sin. Where Cain slew the innocent brother Abel, Christ volunteered his life, the blood. Cain messed up. He was supposed to offer animals because the blood would represent repentance and forgiveness. But he didn't, so he killed his brother. This is what evil spirits do. This is why husbands and wives fight. This is why children are disobedient to the parents. This is why pastors hurt people and people hurt pastors. People in the church fight. This is why there's there's violence in the street of America today. It's because of that tormenting spirit. So you see, like down here, we, uh, so you see, we have to watch what we are saying, feeling, speaking, and all we do, we do it for God and not ourselves. Uh, Colossians 3.17, and whatsoever we do, whether word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So whatever we do, we do it for God. We don't do it for credit. We don't do it for pats on the back. We don't do it to, to hold a position in the church. It's it's this driving spirit is in the pulpit. It's in the church. This this evil spirit to torment is in homes. It's in people. So before I get too hot on that. Uh, so what happened to King Saul didn't happen in one day, as I said. It happens over time. That's the secret. People think they send this big thing and then poof, that all this happens. No, it, it's time. God's patient with it. Time. Remember this. When you give a little, you lose a little until one day you've lost it all. And This is what happened with King Saul. Even went to a witch to be bring up the dead. Now, he's the first one should know better than that. But that's what that evil spirit did to him. Ain't it unusual and remarkable that somebody that has a tormenting spirit, what they'll go through, they'll, they'll turn on their own children. They'll lie to them, cheat them, take money from their own kids. They'll do everything because an evil spirit is tormenting. Okay, so how do you avoid it? Here we go. Be ready to repent the second you feel anything negative. The second you feel anything negative. Admit your fault immediately to the person or and God, I should have put there. Repent to them. Repent to God. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Remember James, book of James, and change. You have the power. You have that power with God. This is important. Remember, you need the Spirit. Pastor, it's time to start preaching in the Spirit. All that talking, it ain't working, man. Your people are dying right in front of you. And teach people how to apologize and set things right. Set it right with God. I still believe with all my heart that God wanted to turn Saul, but Saul wouldn't. He wouldn't. He went away. So what is it? What is it, what is it doing? A king against a, his successor with David and Saul? A man or a woman against their spouse? A sibling against a sibling? Shame on you. A parent against a child? Shame, shame on you. A child against the parents, a child against God. And you see how evil this is? Let me go with some scriptures. And you stay with me a minute. I promise you this is going to help. Luke 13, 24, strive to enter into the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. And remember, this is read Jesus talking. When, when once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock, at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. And he shall say unto you, I, I know you not. Whence, whence you are, where you came from. You don't know anything about you. Then shall he begin to say, we have eaten and drank in thy presence. This is what people will say. And thou hast taught in our streets. Being they stood back and watched, but they went the wrong way. But he will say, I tell you, I know you not. Whence ye are, depart from me, all ye that work iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first, there are first that shall be last. This is what we need to listen to. To drive away evil spirits. Drive away jealousy. Drive away grouchiness and hatefulness. Stinginess. Overbearingness. Picking at people. Get being jealous and try to tear somebody down to somebody else. So that That's an evil spirit, brother. you got an evil spirit. And you need Jesus to drive that out. You need to start the process now. Let me show you something. This is just the last thing, and then I'm going to go. Psalms 2.10. Be wise now there, O kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him, in Jesus. Evil spirits, man. Woman, there's evil spirits out there, and they're tormenting spirits. They are tormenting spirits. They tormented Saul until he ultimately died, and his sons died, and people died in Israel. 
And that's what evil spirits do. Your negative emotions are killing people and killing you. And if you're not careful, you're going to end up in hell. Jealousy is crueler in the grave. Talking against somebody is the same as murder. Possessiveness is coveting. It's the Ten Commandments. You're coveting. You're, you're doing all these things. And if you don't stop, you're going to become suspicious, right? just like this, of good people. And One day you're going to wake up in hell. I love you with all my heart. I want you to get this. That's why I took my time with it. It's a little long. I guess it turned out a little long, but I want you to understand tormenting spirit is in our times now. It's in right now. And you have to read your Bible, read, pray, shout, sing, do everything you're supposed to. And don't be lazy because if you're lazy, they'll come in on laziness too. I love you with all my heart. Be blessed in Jesus name. Stop back. Share this with somebody. Tormenting spirits. They're trying to get to you. Keep them out by doing the will of God. Kiss the sun in the way. Love you. Have a great day. Bye.